Hello and welcome to Toy Ploy 2. So today I'm going to be answering the question, why don't I 3D print parts? It's a question I get asked a lot, especially when I post videos that show myself building parts from styrene or modifying a piece of Lego to repair a toy. I can guarantee someone will leave a comment saying I should have just made a 3D model and printed it out. And that's certainly a good option. So why don't I do it? Well, the main reason is that I like to make things by hand. I find it very relaxing and I like the challenge of creating something from scratch or modifying a part using the skills I have learned over the years. I also want people watching to see what is possible without the need for expensive equipment and just some ingenuity and thought. I really hope that everything I show on Toy Ploy feels like it's achievable by anyone watching or at least that they could have a good go at it. It's amazing what you can make from everyday items and things that don't cost a lot. A few simple tools and a couple of bits of Lego is often more than enough to repair something. There seems little point in me showing a fix that requires an impossible part to get or a tool that would cost more than the toy you're trying to fix. I watch a lot of other repair videos, not just about toys, but all sorts of things from musical instruments to houses, and I get lots of ideas from them. But more often than not, the person fixing has an amazing array of tools and equipment to hand in a workroom that must have taken years to build and cost hundreds, if not thousands of pounds to fill. Or they just by chance happen to have all the missing parts they need for the project already. I've never had a setup like this, and I don't feel that many other people would have access to that either. And as we know, finding parts for toys is getting harder and harder. So when people ask why don't I use a 3D printer, airbrush, silicon moulds, laser cutter, UV lights and so on, it's because I don't think most people will have them. And what is the point of me showing how to fix a toy that only 1% of my audience can copy? I want 100% of the people watching to feel they can at least have a go at fixing something by showing what can be done with minimal tools and simple materials. Sometimes I do show things that are harder to do or get help from other people, but these are few and far between. The skills I use and share can all be learnt. When I started repairing toys, I wasn't great at it. Over the years, I've learnt more and got more confident in what I do. You can see that in the videos I've made over the last nine years on Toy Beloy. I do realise that some of what I show requires practice and patience, but none of it is impossible, so you can at least have a go at it. I've always collected toys that have been well played with and damaged. Fixing them with what I've had to hand has been a big part of the fun of my collection as it's grown. 3D printing is a great tool for sure, and I've built parts and had them printed before for projects. It's just not as fun as making something by hand for me. And I don't think it would make for a very interesting video and it's not something I would enjoy watching. So would I be using a 3D printer in future? Never say never, but certainly not anytime soon. What I will be doing is showing fixes that I feel everyone can have a go at. And even if you don't get the same results that I do, I hope you'll have had fun trying. At the end of the day, I'm just playing with my toys and enjoying them, which is what this hobby is all about. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you've really enjoyed it, then head on over to my main channel, Toy Ploy, and subscribe there as well. And thanks for watching.